Each one of us has a higher self. The entire nature has a higher self. So our higher self knows that life has to be joyous. So once we are confident, we are able to balance our life in a much, much perfect and a happier manner. Our higher self of which, now here I definitely want to make it very clear to you that it's very important for each individual to be in connection with yourself. When you meet yourself, you can dictate your actions. So our higher self, when again says introspection, when we meet ourselves, knows that our individuality is inviolate. Means nobody, nobody can change our individual selves. And we survive with our thoughts and with our actions. Although our bodies must change and return to the soil that sustains material life, To our higher self, the individual lifetimes, understand me carefully when I say, to our higher self, the individual lifetimes it experiences throughout times are like unique talents we possess and explore at different times in this life when the conditions are right. So every life of ours or every lifetime of ours, we are collecting within ourselves unique talents. And we can explore it at different times in the life that is present with us, as in when the conditions are right. So whatever we do in life is completely in our control. Our higher self, is the part of us that provides us guidance by supplying with those irrational hunches. You know, some people say, oh, I had an intuition. Oh, I had this gut feeling. Basically, these are the experiences that are stored with us within our higher self. So our higher self is the part of us that provides us guidance by supplying with those irrational hunches, intuitions and flashes of inspiration. That can, make, that can make everyday life sometimes seem extraordinary or the deja vu like we say. Have you ever thought of someone only to have him or her call you soon afterward? It's happened with me a number of times. Here I'm thinking about somebody including my clients maybe whom I haven't met for a couple of years and I've been concentrating and there, promptly my PA or I, on my personal cell, I would get a call from that particular person. I'm sure it must have been happened with you all a number of times. Have you ever made a left turn instead of right and coincidentally encountered a very delightful situation that you wouldn't want to miss? At times, I tell people, don't think that something wrong has been done to you. Think what right has come out of it. Sometimes, if a person has been mean to you or somebody has passed a sarcastic remark to you, it may hurt at that moment. But eventually, you will find a solution and probably rectify a thing and probably know for yourself that if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have done this correct. That's when I say don't sit judgment on people. Don't be opinionated. If you feel that certain things have not happened the way they should happen, probably you just give, a, uh, you know, you just think for a while and start doing things which can happen and give you much more opportunities than otherwise. It, it's funny though, uh, it's uh, very true if you seriously think about it. At times people have come and spoken to me about certain relationships that have gone wrong. And I often tell them that I am not trying to give you a positive answer, but I am definitely telling you the truth. Think about it. Probably if that relation 
ship would have not gone wrong. You won't have strived better in your career or you won't have become confident of standing on your own two feet because you would have been so blissful in that relationship that never bothered to do something constructive or creative for yourself. Sometimes a bad situation turns into a good situation because to distract yourself from the depression, you actually develop a beautiful hobby. So these are the things which I would say that every situation has a plus to it. Every minus has a plus to it. Every plus also has a minus to it. Hope for the best and be prepared for the worst. But don't miss out on not doing it. You must do it. If you have experienced the indescribable feeling of having a worrying problem solved in a moment of clear perception, then you have been in touch with your higher self. Now, at times, people have come and asked me that, how do I get in touch with my higher self? I would say you don't get in touch with your higher self, you just get into introspection. Once you start introspect, uh, introspecting, you are capable of answering your own questions. And so many of us, and in fact, I would say this must have happened at least once or twice in everybody's life, that I suddenly feel that the problem that I was worrying about for so many days, in a jiffy, I have solved it. Now, when did, when did you solve it? When you had a clear perception and a clear mind. So declutter your mind. A clear perception will always solve your problems. And that is being in touch with your higher self. Because the higher self resides in a very clear mind, in a very clean mind. You need to experience that feeling, even if it is for a moment. And trust me, you will be completely and at peace or secure in the knowledge that your life's uniqueness was indestructible, a valuable and essential part of the evolution of humanity. Then you know what I'm talking about. And this feeling has to be experienced. It's not there for a day. It's not, it's like that euphoric moment when you just feel at peace with yourself, when you're just secure in the knowledge that nobody can destroy you if you have a strong mind. It's like standing on a mountain top. Do this. In case if you haven't met your higher self at the moment, I would say just take out time for yourself. Go and stand on a mountain top. Why am I saying mountain top? Because it's the highest point and you can look down. Okay? Or you could probably stand in front of the ocean. Anything that takes your fancy. Stand on the mountain top or in front of the ocean on the clearest of days when you can see forever, when you can see at a long distance. That type of overview, the broad perspective that comes from being high above is described as what is actually just another aspect of our being, our higher self. You, you will experience that moment's shanti, like they say, the moment's peace. And you will just be in sync with yourself and with the nature that is known as higher self. My strongest point is that I constantly endeavor to be in touch and stay with my higher self. Even when I'm talking to you, I just feel in connect with my higher self. So I speak what comes in my mind. And I never fear the negative. I never fear what the others are going to think. Because I feel I'm speaking from my heart. I'm speaking with my purity of intent. And that's been my strongest point in life. That I constantly endeavor to be in touch. And I trust every word that I speak. Because I know it's my higher self that is guiding me. And this is a practice that I have done for years. So that I could best do my part in what gives me the utmost happiness and I call it my path of spiritualism, helping humanity. I do my meditation because it clears my mind. But my spiritualism or spiritualism for me is my work. 
and if somebody is helped through my work, I think I am completely in connect with my higher self because it make, gives me happiness, it gives me peace, it gives me contentment. I have realized from the past 35 years that I have been in this profession, I have realized that each one of us is capable of being in touch with our higher selves. This tremendous knowledge and power about our higher self is available to everyone 24-7. I mean, it's not true when they say only few of us are gifted. In my scheme of things, each one of self is gifted. Only we need to explore it and we need to tap our inner energies through our higher self. We have to open our minds and realize our amazing potential for self-guidance. What is life? They say it's from B to D, that is from birthday to the death day. But what's between B and D? It's a C, choice. Our life is a matter of choices. Live well and it'll